if you're a connoisseur of running shoes, a collector, an obsessor, you might be interested in running shoe foam. Like Strike Pro this, Zoom Max that, yada yada, what does it all mean? Well, in today's video, I'm here to break it all down for you. I might have gotten a little carried away. The Primordial Pre-Foam Era. In 1865, Thomas Dutton and Thomas Thorogood made the first running shoe, which looked like this. Then, in 1890, the Spalding Company made this. These were made out of leather and wood. A great leap forward came in 1948 when shoes were allowed to have stripes. Yes, the establishment of Adidas. In 1954, Roger Bannister broke four minutes in the mile wearing these bad boys, made by G.T. Law and Son, weighing only 128 grams, which in modern running shoes is a Streak Fly 2 equivalent. Only difference, besides literally everything, is that those were spikes. The next innovation was in 1960, when New Balance invented the first daily trainer, a shoe for the masses. Then, in 1974, Nike dropped the very first banger, the waffle. But dude, come on, get to the foam. Ethylene vinyl acetate, more commonly known as EVA, was first used in a shoe by Brooks in the Villanova. Then there was the introduction of the AirPod in 1987 with the Nike Air Max. From there, midsole innovation mostly puttered on a well-worn EVA path. The first blip on the logarithmic curve of innovation occurred with the Adidas Boost. The first thermoplastic polyurethane, or TPU, shoe was born in 2013, just a year after I finished high school. A good leap forward, but due to density, it was hard to develop lighter shoes with this new compound. Still, it earned Adidas some notoriety. So we are over 150 years into shoe history. Take a deep breath because only four years later, in 2017, indeed only three years before COVID, things went parabolic, not pandemic. You guys know the story. Nike wanted to defy the laws of marathoning and push a man below two hours by any means necessary. So they shoveled money into the steam engine of progress. It's working, it's working. Until the first super shoe was born than Nike Vaporfly 4%. What are the properties that make running shoe foam so unique? Cushioning, energy return, stability, durability, weight, and temperature sensitivity. In some ways, cushioning is a non-word. It doesn't mean anything, at least until you define it. Let's give it a shot. Impact attenuation. Fancy words for not breaking your bones. Um, the foam spreads out impact forces when your foot hits the ground so your knees don't explode. Viscoelasticity. Foam wears two hats, acting both like a stretchy elastic band, snapping back, and pancake syrup, absorbing energy and dissipating it as heat. This means every step is bouncy, cushy, and a little toasty. Compliance and stiffness. Compliance is how easily foam caves under pressure. Think of it as the friend who never says no. Stiffness, or Young's modulus, if you're feeling scholarly, is the stubborn cousin refusing to bend without a fight. The perfect foam is highly subjective, but almost never on the extreme end of the compliance to stiffness continuum. Energy return. The first component of energy return is resilience. How much does a foam rebound when compressed? That is its resilience. Essentially, the foam borrows energy from you on landing and generously returns most of it as you spring forward. Hysteresis describes the energy your foam selfishly keeps and turns into heat instead of giving back. 
Lower hysteresis means more bounce and less sweat-inducing heat buildup. High resilience and low hysteresis are basically foam's dream couple. Stability. There's more going on in every single running shoe, neutral or stable, than I ever expected. Compressive modulus. Stability foam is tough stuff. It's denser and harder to squash, acting like a stern bouncer, keeping unwanted foot wobbles out of your stride. Compressive modulus, then, is how hard it is to squish something. Torsional rigidity. Stops your shoe from twisting like a pretzel, keeping your foot aligned and your ankles blissfully unaware they're even running. Bending stiffness. A little stiffness is good. It keeps things orderly. Too much though, and you'll feel like you're running on wooden planks. This is why running your 5k ultras in carbon is killing your calves, and you should probably slow down. Moment of inertia. Wider midsoles are like outriggers on a canoe. They prevent embarrassing tip overs and dramatic ankle sprains. Durability. There are two types of durability that matter for running shoes. Compression set resistance. Ever sat on an old couch and sunk straight to the frame? That's what happens to foam without good compression set resistance. Good foam resists turning into pancake batter. This is the durability of mileage. Fatigue resistance. Foam faces an endless treadmill of stepping, squashing, and bouncing back. Great foam endures this repetitive cycle without collapsing into existential despair. This is long run durability. Weight. Weight is actually as simple as it sounds. Weight, what? Density, in science speak, density is just mass packed into space. Lower density foam is like having whipped cream instead of a cheesecake. Just as delightful, but a lot less heavy and a little bit less delightful. Temperature sensitivity! Californians, Aussies, and coastal folks the world round will be stumped by this section, but temperature sensitivity in running shoes is a result of glass transition temperature. Foam has mood swings based on temperature. Above the TG, the glass transition temperature, foam is flexible and happy. Below it, foam stiffens like your muscles during an ice bath. Running in the cold, foam gets grumpy, bricks up, and makes your shoes feel more like skis. Blame polymer chemistry for your winter woes. With those foam properties in mind, what are all the big chuds on campus doing to make your feet feel frenetic? We are living in a boutique buffet of tuned foams. Of critical importance to the entire modern running shoe market is the supercritical foaming process. The supercritical process! Imagine turning boring plastic pellets into fluffy, high-performance foam using science that's basically controlled explosions. The first step is saturation. Solid plastic pellets soak in supercritical nitrogen, or carbon dioxide, which sneaks into the plastic-like gas, infiltrating your popcorn kernels. Sudden expansion. The pressure is suddenly dropped, causing millions of tiny gas bubbles to burst into existence, puffing pellets up like popcorn. Molding. These puffy pellets fuse together into a mold shaped by gentle steam, resulting in lightweight, springy midsoles perfect for chasing PRs. The Hypes of Foam. EVA, also known as ethylene vinyl acetate. Think of EVA as custom paper clip chains, where some clips are stiff and some are flexible. Change the ratio, change the softness. Baking soda like blowing agents expanded into soft foam, cushioning your runs. TPU, or thermoplastic polyurethane. Pipe cleaners, your flexible polyol, glued beads, rigid diisocyanate, and plain beads, 
chain extenders, combined to make stretchy yet tough chains. Puff these pellets into bouncy ETPU foam with steam, popcorn style. Aliphatic TPU is just like TPU, except resistant to UV light breakdown. There isn't a ton of information on this, but it is suspected that this UV resistance contributes to the next level bounce found in this foam. Peeble. Polyether block amide. A specific type of polyamide, also known as nylon, hard blocks, meets polyether, the rubbery soft blocks, to create a foam with unmatched bounce. Again, the supercritical process makes it light and responsive. T P E E Thermoplastic Polyester Elastomer. Another blocky blend, this time polyester, creates the rigid blocks, plus springy polyether, the soft blocks. TPEE is durable, bouncy, and a master at repeated compression cycles. Boutique Foam Blends Shoe companies act like chefs, mixing EVA, TPU, PIBA, and special additives in industrial shoe mixers. Melted, blended, and cooled, these proprietary pellets are then turned into superior foam midsoles through our good old friend, the supercritical process. Thanks for joining me on this foamy adventure. May your runs always be cushioned and your foam always be bouncy.